Okay, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. And I hope everything's going alright, because, uh, I've recently changed to a new installation of Windows on a, uh, new hard drive which I bought. Which I should have done like a year ago, but it's such a pain setting these things up, I keep putting it off. But, uh, <laughs> I've finally done it. So, it also means I have to, uh, go around and adjust all my uh, audio settings and all that. I hope things are all right. I've listened to it a bit myself and it should be good. Oh, I'm seeing that my mic is uh, peaking a little bit. Let me see. That would be under the compressor one, I think. It should be doing that automatically, shouldn't it? Uh. Let's see, maybe if I reduce it by a bit. Audio stuff! I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm not an audio person. Uh, I just pretty much, like, follow guides. Okay, there we go. That's maybe a bit better. Right, now, anyway, all that aside, uh, yes, we are going to uh, start playing a new game tonight. Having done an awful lot of Morrowind, uh, I'm going to put that to the side for the moment. Um, so I can do some other things. Uh, we are going to be playing some Arctic Adventure. Now, uh, Arctic Adventure is a 2D platformer, which I used to play way back when, on my, on our, uh, Windows 3.1 computer in DOS. Uh, I can't remember exactly when it came out. Hang on, it comes, comes with a readme. Let's see. Uh, I believe it might have come out in 1990. So yeah, it's pretty old. Uh, I think general reviews of the game is that it's not a very good one. I would say it's an, it's a fine platformer. Now, when I say fine, <laughs> uh, I, I think you have to sort of take that in context of the time. Uh, platformers on DOS were not exactly rare. But the ones which were playable were kind of the special ones. Uh, there was quite a lot of bad platformers because people didn't understand or, you know, didn't have the coding skills to make jump trajectories which worked. Or hitboxes which were reasonable. This game doesn't actually have very reasonable hitboxes, come to think of it, but the jump mechanics are alright. Uh, yeah, it's also interesting in that it's in CGA. Uh, which is a, oh boy, let's see, CGA graphics is, I believe it's limited to four colours. And it uses the blues and purples of that. Uh, there is actually, I think, a prequel to this game called Pharaoh, or Pyramid Quest, or Pharaoh something or other like that. It's, it's very similar to this. Uh, I believe I have played that one as well. At least the shareware versions of these. Um, and... Uh, but that one uh, uses the other CGA colour palette, which is the oranges, browns, reds, and greens. So, a bit more suiting for a uh, deserty theme. But this one uses all the uh, blues because it's in the Arctic. So, yeah. It's interesting, actually, because... I mentioned this game to some friends of mine, and, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was mentioned that, uh, the game, since it is in CGA, it's possible that, uh, it could have run in composite. Which I had no idea about apparently it was a visual system it was a visual style uh or setting to allow for more colors in the limited color palette of uh cga uh i'm going to bring up two pictures here uh no don't copy hang on save image as desktop there we go okay because uh, this is interesting, but it's not something which I'm going to do myself. Let's see. Uh, if I bring up 
image. Okay, there we go. And I go to desktop and I do this one. Right, okay, so here's the title screen of Arctic Adventure. Uh, we will see this in the flesh, as it were, in a bit uh, when I load it in DOSBox. <laughs> Gonna have to constrain your excitement. Um, and if I bring up this other image, uh, DOSBox has a built-in composite uh, setting, setting, which I haven't fiddled with, but uh, this friend of mine uh, did have a fiddle around with it to see whether the game would look better, considering uh, if it was run using this composite system. And you can see there, uh, the colours do look a little bit more varied. Um, I honestly don't think the game was developed with composite mode in mind. Um, there was actually another screenshot involving one of the levels. Uh, I can actually get both of those as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, sure, I will copy that one. There you go. There is an image of a level. And if I do it for this other image, but I... Hang on. Save image as that one. Yes, I do want to. There we go. There might be dings every now and then again because I have a tamed Windows uh, Windows 10 completely. So, so there's the same image. Uh, the one on the left is how the game looks normally. The one on the right is with the DOS box built-in composite mode. Uh, in, um, implement, uh, what's it called? Turned on. Uh, which I had no knowledge of. I didn't run the game with anything like that when I played it. It was just how it looked like on the left. And I think looking at the screenshots, I feel pretty confident in saying that the game was just designed for the flat four color palette, just because the pixels are a lot sharper. Um, there's a few extra colors coming in there through the composite mode, but uh, I feel like the loss of uh, sharpness doesn't really help it. So... Uh, apparently, though, that sharpness loss is kind of par and parcel for composite mode. I'll zoom this in so you can see it a bit more. I really don't know much more about this. So it, was, it was completely new to me at the time. I didn't even know that uh, CGA was sort of... Some CGA games, at least, were designed for this. Some games showed this off much better. I think the uh, Commander Keen... Four, I think it is, uh, can run in CGA mode, and if you run it in composite, it actually comes through with uh, a bit more of a varied color palette. I guess it's because it's blending like the different colors together by sort of overlaying the pixels slightly, or something. That's my guess. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, that's just an interesting little tech thing. Uh. Let's get rid of those, and we will load up uh, Arctic Adventure. Warning, this game only uses a uh, PC speaker, so there's going to be beeps and bloops. They're not going to be too loud. There we go. Hang on. That is not right. I should have this. Uh, I did this last time. As I said, there was going to be issues. Oh boy, how do I... Okay, I think maybe that. There we go. Okay, so here's Arctic Adventure. Volume 1, version 2.0. Copyright 1991. So it actually came out a year later than what I thought. Let's see, story so far. Here's the other color palette for CGA. Uh, greens, oranges, and reds. Now, story so far. It's been six months since you found the elusive Pharaoh's tomb. That was the first game. And returned a hero to archaeology. There were those who praised your success, such as Dr. Jones, your boss, and the Board of Archaeology. At the university, others so-called experts simply dismissed the entire discovery as beginner's luck. Every day for the past six months, you have been searching for yet another priceless find to go after. For hours on end, you have scrutinised the old dusty books in the library, hoping for a lead, a chance to prove yourself. Last night you found it. In an ancient Nordic scroll, you found a tale of a band of Vikings who travelled to the Arctic to hide a shipload of treasures they had collected during their looting raids. The location of the cave was etched onto a map which was then torn into four pieces and spread about the Arctic caves. 
Only the Vikings who knew the locations of the maps could find the treasure caves again. On the return voyage, the Viking ship sank during a great storm at sea, forever hiding their valuable secret. Dr. Montana Johnson, yeah. <laughs> I think it was kind of a given. If you're going to be playing as some kind of archaeologist, you would have a reference to uh, Mr. Johnson. Legally distinct Jones. You have decided to go to the caves and search for a piece of the lost map. It may contain clues to finding the other torn fragments. Come with me, Dr. Jones. You and I together will stand a better chance. No, kid. I have too much work to do here. Besides, I hate cold weather. Dr. Jones reaches into his desk drawer and pulls out an object wrapped in cloth and tosses it to you. Here, kid. You may need some ins insurance on this trip. You unwrap the object to find his trusty uh, .38 caliber, caliber revolver. Tucking it into your belt, you shake hands with him and leave his office. Going back to your apartment, you once again pack your tattered suitcase and prepare for another great adventure. Heading out, heading towards the docks, you book passage on a freighter ship bound for the deep Arctic. Lying in your hammock and pushing your hat forward to cover your eyes, you drift into sleep and dream of the high adventure that awaits you. There we go. Plot! It's important to make sense of what's going to be going on. Okay, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, journey onwards. And here we go. Okay, so there's 20 caves. I I have finished the, uh, shareware version of this game. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to complete, uh, the, uh, other, I think, three episodes? Um, I'm not even sure whether I'll be able to complete the, uh, shareware version. It depends on how difficult it is, mostly. Um, I did finish it back in the day. I'm pretty sure of that. So, anyway, let's go to the first level. Okay, so, left and right arrow keys is move, space is jump, and I think control is fire gun. You'll see down the bottom we have a zero in the bottom left, that is our points. On the bottom right we have a bullet with two, we have two bullets. And yeah. We have to go, drop down here, pick up that uh, pickaxe, because you use the pickaxes to break those ice blocks over on the left there. And we have to watch out for those, uh, you may see those blocks on the walls there. They are shooting darts, I guess, at us. If they hit us, we die. This game is a one hit death game, so we have to be very careful. I may have messed things up a bit. You can't... Uh, actually, that worked pretty well. You have to be very careful. Uh, as I said, hitboxes in this game are kind of iffy because... You have to think of the hitbox as just being a square around the character. Uh, it may look like you jumped over something or didn't hit it, but... Uh, you will know. Okay, I think there's occasionally hidden items under blocks. If you bump your head into them, uh, if you jump up into the block, you might uncover a gem or something. There we go. First level's done. Uh, let me save. Okay. So there's a door which we use one of the keys we collected in. I'm not sure whether it's possible to get into an unwinnable situation in this game. I, shall t I I guess best uh, practice would be to collect everything in a level. Just make sure that you uh, have absolutely everything the game's giving you. Let's go over here first. Okay, there is a Yeti. And there's spikes. There's a hidden object. Right, now. Oh! Okay, we need to get those two pickaxes to get to the key and the pipe, which will lead out of the area. Pipes are copyright of any other particular game franchises, are they? Uh, right, we need to go up here. Press the button. That will change the level layout a little bit. Collect those coins. And we need to drop down over here. There's actually no, um controlling the height of your jump. If you press spacebar, you will jump as high as you can. Oh. Okay, 
And you've got to watch out for those stalactites down there because uh, they'll fall on top of you. Okay, cool. Okay, good, good. Now, I might have to go back around. No wonder Dr. Glo Dr. Jones declined. This place is pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, these 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 uh, Arctic caves are uh, unlike anything I've ever seen before. I do like the Yeti though, in the way it's sort of like shuffling around down there. <laughs> And a character sort of oh, piercing. Uh, character sort of wiggles his arms back and forth whenever we walk around. I think the person who made this made a bunch of other games. I wouldn't be able to say exactly what they were off the top of my head, but I think it was like George Broussard or something like that. Oh. From what I remember, there is no fall damage, so you don't have to worry about, like, dying if you drop the whole level down. There we go. There's no timer, so really you just have to, you know, just take your time with jumps and all that. Okay. And also... I think if we dropped down there, uh, before we got the two pickaxes, we wouldn't be able to get out. So if you're going into an area which is deeper than, I think, two blocks is the maximum you can jump, uh, you better be sure that you uh, want to go that way and there's nothing else which you need to get because you won't be getting out of there. At least I think. Yep. That's a one-way trip. There we go. Ooh. It's a, uh, bonus level. I don't know whether I'm too concerned about my high score. Yeah, we'll just get some of them. There we go. Okay, then we'll just save. There we go. We'll save. I'll do all the levels I can before I start using keys. Okay. And in here. Oop, hello. I don't know what that is on the right there. It's, I, I guess it's, I think I've always thought of it as like a big penguin. Oop. Bounced off his head. It didn't kill me. That's amazing. Uh, right, so. I might actually have to jump off its head to get up onto that block. I'm pretty sure the Yeti will kill me if I hit it, though. Oh! Looks like he also turns around if I get close enough to him. I can shoot it, but bullets are very scarce, so it's best if I don't. Oh, you do kill me. Okay. Righto then. Okay, you do kill me. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. So how do I get up there then? Oh! Oh, I think I know. Oh, you saw it. I don't know if there's lives. Hang on. Okay, what is shoot? Uh... Okay, shoot is Z. There we go. We get rid of both of those. Because I've had enough of them. And let's go over here. Let's push the rock over this way. Or the ice block. High quality sound effects. There's one of those dart traps there. Okay. They shoot whatever you're parallel with them, regardless of distance. Or objects in the way, I think. Oh. There we go. 
Uh. Okay, that's good. Let's go up here. Oh, I did say also welcome. <laughs> uh, right, yes. Uh, I need to get that other pick over there. Gonna be a bit tricky. Hmm. I was pressing spacebar, but he wasn't jumping. Oh, it actually, like, resets me to, uh... the state I was in when I went into level. Okay, that's nice. I'm guessing then infinite lives. That's quite forgiving. points. Okay. Yep. Let's go up here and get this. So let's see. Um, how many pickaxes do I have? Two. And there's three. Those larger blocks over there, I wonder whether I'm going to have to, like, break them with my head or something. Jump into them from- jump into them from below. Let's see... I think if I go on here... Jump. Jump up. Jump up. There we go. Because it can only shoot one bullet at a time. So you jump before uh, you get to that block, and then you'll have enough time to fall back down and, uh, dodge the bullet. Uh. Okay. Damn it. Oh well. Uh-oh. That could actually be quite bad. Hmm. Gonna have to jump over the bullet, or dart, whatever. <laughs> bullet. Let's just call it a bullet. Uh, okay. Oh, actually, let's stay up here. Oh. Okay. Jump over to there. Drop down. Yep, okay. You bump your head into them, and it breaks the block. There's another coin. Break that, get the key, break that, and we're gonna have to go across these. There we go. Uh, here's another cave. Oh. So there's a dart trap there. Hmm. I think I know what I have to do. Let's see, where are we going to be going? I'd use my mouse to gesture, gesture but uh, I'm full screened. Mm, let's see. So I need two pickaxes. They're both down the bottom there. There's a button down there. There's also a button over on the left there. Uh, hang on. If I press escape... Okay, so you can quit the map to be able to reset it. Okay. Just in case I fell down that hole there, but I wouldn't be able to get out. But I think a hole will open up, which allows me to jump back out again. Mm. Okay. There we go. Hmm. 
Oh. Yeah, slippery ice physics. Oh no. Okay. Put your foot over the uh, edge of the block there so that you can uh, switch over to the other ice block uh, faster than just standing in the middle of it. Yep, there we go. Okay, how do I get that key though? There's no spikes there. Hmm. How would I do that? Maybe the uh, button down there changes something so I can get it. Okay, whoa. Okay. Right. That didn't change a huge amount. I don't know whether you can fall off the block to, ke to collect the key and uh, fall down the hole. I feel that key's just there to mess with you. I, I don't think I can, you can make sense, you can uh, collect it. Okay, let me see. What am I going to do here? I think if I push that Yeti up against the hole, that will mess things up. Uh, because I can't push him into the spikes and he'll be blocking the uh block so i should probably shoot him or i could ah ah uh We're th hang on. We're thinking here. Right, okay. If I do this... Okay, now we need to jump, jump, drop down. There we go. Oh, sod you! Oh, yes! Okay, I forgot about that. Um, okay, so you see how the ice down there... Uh, most of the ice has the uh, blue lines on it vertically. However, those ones down in the corner there, they have the blue lines uh, diagonally. The ones underneath the pickaxe there are pointing to the right, and the ones in the uh, on the bottom are pointing to the left. Uh, they'll actually move you in that direction, whereas this ice which I'm standing on will just push me in whatever, whatever direction I am uh, currently moving in. So... Okay, get up, whoop, whoop. Come on, Mr. Penguin, just move away. I don't know whether you're a penguin, you kind of look like Grimace from uh, McDonald's. Oh, there we go. Okay. Some strange ice. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Weird uh, ice physics than you would expect. Yup. Yeah, we actually stopped the block from moving. I was uh, kind of assuming if we got caught between the wall and the block, we would just get crushed and killed. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Okay. All's good. More points? Nope. Okay. Looks like Opus the Penguin from Bloom Country Comics. I might vaguely know what you're referring to, even though I would, I've never actually read the comics. I think I might have seen a picture of something like that ages ago. Pardon me, I was speaking into my cup a bit there. Um, but yeah. That might actually be what it's based off of, if it's supposed to be a penguin. I always assumed it was a penguin, so...
it would make sense considering the game. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of you. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Well, that was a wasted bullet. There we go. Okay. Poor Yetis. He wasn't doing anything bad. Except tossing you around in Spelunky. Okay. Oh, yes! So I'm holding left at the moment. Uh, you can't actually... Uh... You can't make progress against the ice which pushes you in the, um, other direction. You can only... <laughs> Forestall the inevitable. There we go. Whoop. I think even if you jump, you won't have uh, momentum in that direction. You'll just sort of jump in place. Ugh. Damn it. Okay, so, let's see. Yeah. I just need to do that jump, but better. <laughs> he said, failing it again. Whoop. It's fine. It's all practice. Uh... Oh, damn it. I need to jump on, like, the edge of the pipe there. I don't know why there's pipes in the Arctic. Don't question it. <laughs> they would be pretty useless. They'd be all frozen. Oh! It's an... Ancient... Uh, sort of skill of uh, having to like stick your character out from an edge just enough so that he doesn't bump his head on the uh, ceiling when you want to jump um, from a very tight gap. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's save. Okay. Uh, three keys. I hope I can have as many keys as I want. It's not going to start overwriting them if I uh, pick up too many. Let's go in here. Okay. So there's an ice block over there I can break. However, there is no... Uh, oh, hello. There's no platforms there which I can uh, stand on to get them. That means I need to go over here, press this. There we go. that area over to the right. I will have to do that. Oh, maybe I can jump forward on them. Oh, I can jump forward on the, the ice. Okay, well, forget what I said before. You can't actually jump forward on the ice. You just constantly slide uh, in the other direction. <laughs> ah. How does this work? You just have to accept it. And I don't know what that is down there. Pink goop. <laughs> Maybe it's tubby custard. Okay, falling block. Oh, damn it. My head bumped onto the roof. I like that there's a little sort of moving effect on the water, on the, uh, we're gonna call, say water down there. Though it does kind of make it look a bit more like goop than water. Oh, yeah, okay. It's water, because I froze into an ice block. Actually had a unique death animation. That's nice. Come on.
Ow. Sod it. Okay, let's try again. Up. Up. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, come on. Get over there. There we go. Uh. Okay. Oh, right. I have to hop on top of this block here. I was attempting to jump before I got in line with the uh, dark gun, but... Uh... It doesn't matter whether I hold down spacebar or not, uh, it doesn't change my jump arc. I guess it's just the game being a bit finicky about whether it decides it wants to accept the input or not. I don't feel like it right now. Or I'll accept the input, but not completely. You know. What? Press more than two keys at once? You gotta be crazy. That's what I should have done. Because you don't fall onto the spikes unless you fall onto the spikes. You could uh, put your character out. Let's see, how far? Yeah, right. So I could move my character over this far uh, off a platform before he falls off. You've essentially got like a whole more, a whole more block of uh, jump distance with that. That was very important in Captain Comic, because there was a jump on the moon level where you had to uh, stick your foot over the edge to be able to make it. Oh, you don't fall? Mm. Uh, let's drop this way. So I don't bump into the edge of those spikes. I know the color palette's very limited. Personally, it doesn't really bother me too much. At least for this game, I find it to be rather appropriate, considering this, um, considering the setting. And the graphics aren't trying to do anything too fancy with it, so. Okay, let's go here. Okay. Hmm. Ice blocks. Uh, okay. Hmm. Right, let's go this way. Oh! Oh, whoop. Uh. Okay, I'll wait for you to come back. No. Uh. 
Who left all these revolvers lying around in the Arctic? Those damn Vikings! <laughs> and they're what, 0.35 caliber revolvers? There we go. Eh, yeah, whatever. Ugh. Oh, sod you. Uh. Sound effects are like you won the lottery. Sorry, you're all going to die. I think a 38 is the type of pistol you get in the beginning of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, and it's described as a pea shooter. I guess vampires are more powerful than yetis and giant penguins. Save and move on. Uh, okay, I've done there. I've done that level. Uh, okay, let's do this one. Okay. That looks deceptively simple. Ah. There's floor traps. <laughs> pop up pop up guns. Oh no, it's a boulder. <gasps> yeah, I thought so. Ow. Oh. Can't touch the boulders, they're made of poison. Oh wow. <laughs> Can I just wait over here? Will they respawn? No, they will not. Okay, well, I'm going to do that rather than jump over them. Dr. Jones only had to run away from one border. We have to run away from three. <laughs> Clearly we're better. Ah. Okay, we're gonna have to take... No, we're not. We're gonna have to jump over those. Right. Uh -oh. Damn it. My foot! Maybe they're snowballs, rather than boulders. Okay, so let's see. 
I think I'm just gonna have to jump and dodge them the whole way down that line. Uh, thank you, points. Oh. oh. Okay, there we go. Oh. Some more points there. None there. Okay. Drop onto them. There we go. Oh, another bonus stage. Eh. I don't care. Okay, so there's another level done. Uh, let's see. I think that's all the ones with that, uh, which don't require keys to get to. Oh, hang on. Maybe there's one all the way down here. Um, well, I guess let's do this one. Hmm. Okay, what's this block? Uh, I guess that block falls when I stand on it. Okay. It doesn't look like it goes up again either. Ah. Right. Go back to the map. We messed that up. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the hitboxes work, sometimes they don't. <laughs> it's a mystery. What if I could shoot you from here? Ah, I don't want to try. Might waste a bullet. And there's another pistol in this level, so sure, I will, uh... I'll use the bullet. And deal with the penguin. There we go. Maybe they're giant albino penguins. We get some Lovecraft references in this. Uh, right. Uh, good. Okay, now. There's a dart trap right below me. I'm going to have to drop and jump as soon as I land. Uh, and uh, jump again. Can't forget that. So there's spikes. Ow. Okay. Oh. There we go. It's got to say that boulder looks like it was going to fall. Oh, 
Okay, just take your time. got another key. I don't know whether you have to complete all the levels to finish. Uh, we need four pickaxes. No, we need three. I miscounted. Wow. Okay. Uh, there is a button there, so let's go over there. Oh, and you can slide in, you can press in a direction to uh, slide faster in that direction when you're on that type of ice. Oh, so perilous. No, you can't press down on the uh, pipes to warp through them. Okay, so we need to... Yeah. Let's head back this way. Go through there? Uh, sure. Oh! <coughs> okay, a mean beginning. You just let it fall, you'll uh, fall on the spikes. Right. So we have to go... Yep. Uh... Okay, I see, I think. You're not going to fall. No. Good. Alright. Uh. I don't think I can get all those gems down there. Call me crazy. It kind of looks like it's just a big trap. I guess at least you'd die rich. Do I have all the uh, pickaxes? I've actually got five. Four, five. Yep. Well, that's all the ones I need. If the game was sporting, there'd be a button somewhere so that you could drop down, get them, and then go to the exit. But uh, I don't think there is one. I'm not seeing a button anywhere. No. And I'm pretty sure there's not like hidden levers or buttons in any of the blocks, so. That's just gems which you can't have. 
Ooh. You can only save on the massacre. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Halfway done. Uh, I need a boat. Yeah, you can go on the water there. But we need to find a boat first. And I don't remember where that is. I don't... Items. Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? I'm expecting one of these levels to have blocks which I shouldn't break. Uh. Damn it! <laughs> no! I wonder whether the other uh, episodes of this have any new elements in them. Or whether they're just more uh, levels of more of the same. Okay. And I need to... Ah! No, don't go over that way yet. I need to get this pickaxe first. Okay, so that's what's happening. The moving block, if I'm stepping over the uh, edge, will actually push me back. Though you can hold left or hold the direction to just walk onto the block when it's level with the platform. There we go. Surprise boulder. I know, it's very rude. It was lying in ambush. That's why they're white. It's so that they camouflage themselves against all the snow. There's a boat! At least I think it's a boat. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like a maybe it's like a funnel or something. <laughs> nope. Could be a bowl of cereal. Yeah. Ball of frosted flakes. Oh. I wonder what the max score you could get in this game is. No, I'm not interested enough to try. <laughs> We got a boat. We're now carrying it with us. Yeah, it's nice also because it's little things with the jump mechanics. Uh, I think when we hit our head on the uh, roof, we actually slide slightly rather than uh, in some platformers where you would hit your head on the roof and you'd instantly start uh, on the descending arc of your jump. 
So you actually retain a bit of air time if you bump your head, which just makes jumping a little bit more forgiving. So I said, this game's not fantastic, uh, but the uh, controls in it, I feel put it above uh, quite a lot of much more mediocre platformers for the time. Pocket boat. <laughs> There we go. You can see we have the boat in our inventory now. It says items. I wonder whether there's other items. I honestly don't remember. I remember the boat. But, uh... Okay. Mm. Let's finish all the levels around here before we start sailing on the ocean. Not actually sure. I guess I assumed we're in a uh, cavern or something. No. Okay, is there any keys here? No. There is arrows pointing up though. Slippy slidey ice world. Okay, nothing there. Whoop. There we go. Hang on. Whoa. Okay. And... Whoa. Nope, hang on. Whoa. Okay. Ah, yes. So you have to be careful not to break both of the blocks there. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, no, actually it doesn't matter. You can just jump out. Okay. I thought maybe you'd have to use one of them as a platform. I don't have any keys left. Let's go in the ocean. We <laughs> Kind of actually looks like we're just really wearing really wide pants. Like some humorously, uh some humorously uh, hooped pants like a clown would wear. Damn it. Okay. Ah, yeah, right, okay. I don't think we should pick up that last coin. I don't know whether the bullets run faster, move faster, faster than you do. Whether you can keep ahead of them or not. I don't think so. Faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so. Here, we need to break the bottom block, because if we break, break the top one, well, we'll use up our picker, we can't prog progress. There we go. Right. Uh, there's two penguins down there, and two uh, yetis. Let's go this way. What's this do? Ah! Okay, the way, the way out. Damn it! Okay. 
can be a bit difficult to uh, align yourself with a hole to jump up into it. down here. Let's just get the gun. I don't need the points. There we go. But points. Mm. Nah, no, don't bother. Okay. There, there. Whoa. I'd still kind of like to get that. Uh, whatever. No, nope, let's just leave. There we go. Did he go back and do levels again? Nope. Once you've done a level, you've done it. more surprise boulders. Nope. Uh, right, so there's three pickaxes, we got one, there's one over there, there's one over there. There's a button up there. I guess if you used all of your ammunition, I've already forgotten whether the game gave me a gun before I shot that uh, penguin. I think so. So it might provide ammunition if you really need it. Hmm. I was paused because I, I paused because I was wondering whether I should go and press both of the buttons. I honestly don't know, so we're going to press both of them anyway, so I know what they do. One of them is red. To me, that says it's bad. Okay, you can't stand on a platform where there's going to be spikes appearing at all, even if you're completely off it. Water. There we go. Okay. Boop. Hmm. Okay, never mind. I have to actually press both of the buttons anyway. down that way. points. Okay, let's hop out of our boat. And... No, not down there. 
Nearly done. Only five more levels to go. Maybe I will have a look at the other two, uh, uh the other, uh, episodes. Again, it really does depend on how difficult they are. If they're comparable to this, then it's really not a problem. Uh, but if they're, like, significantly difficult, more difficult, then... Yeah. How do I get to that cave? Hmm. What's all the way around here? <laughs> A level. Who would have thought? I like that there's a little sort of tap 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 noise coming from the speaker when you walk. <laughs> And they, and they went for that rather than like a boop, 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 boop. As loud as the sound effects in this are, and uh, as piercing as the ones which you when you pick up points, they're not as overbearing as in some games which I've played, where it's just a constant assault of uh, PC speaker noises. Those are obnoxious. This is just kind of... Uh, this is tolerable. <laughs> What a thing for you to put on a review. Sound is tolerable. You're even not even getting the full experience here because uh, I've turned the sound down. You're ready for modern conveniences. You people don't know what it's like. Having a PC speaker and not, having, not being able to adjust the volume of it. It's just full blast the whole time. It's a bit more manageable though, because um I wouldn't have been wearing headphones. Come on. Get up. I said There we go. Okay. Uh... Sure. Let's go into this level. Where am I? Oh, I'm in the middle. Okay. Uh... Huh. Where's the exit? I see a key. Let's see, there's three pistols. I think the pistols give me one bullet each. I might only be able to hold a maximum of nine bullets. I'm not actually too sure. Each pistol gives me two bullets. Oh! Okay, hello. I guess I'm down here now. Okay, so that level's sort of, I guess there's pipes which you'll fall down and it will end the level prematurely. I did get the key in that level, didn't I? Did I? 
Hang on. Let me try it again. So where was that portal? No, I didn't get the key. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, I don't think there's anything to differentiate the pipes from one another, if you can drop down them or not. I thought maybe there'd be like a pixel which is different on them, but uh, it looks like they're all the same. Where the Yeti is waddling, you think? Yeah. Hmm. I guess we'll just have to try and error it. I think it was just one of those pipes. Like the third one? Under the ice, maybe. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so it is that one. GB. And this will lead out of the level, I guess. Yep, okay. Actually, it looks like that was a different area. Unless it takes me to a different one every time. Let me have a look. Okay, so it's that one right on the edge there. Which I can drop down. I guess it just sends you to a random area whenever you drop down. Ah! Okay. And you don't have to be completely over the uh, platform to drop down it. You just have to sort of touch it enough and you'll uh, pull down the pipe. It just sort of... It just pulls you down. Because I'm thinking if you do this level properly, you might be able to get to a secret level. Which is probably something I haven't done before. Now I'm wondering whether any of those other pipes have, uh, portals in them. Ah. Mm. Probably. So would there be one of these pipes which you do have to drop down? Because there's no buttons here. I don't know how it would end up opening up that other level. Let's do that. Okay. Just got to wait for the uh, itch fork to uh, completely move away so you don't drop onto the spikes. Okay, so these, they're not fine. But I stood on the edge of that one. Hmm. Let's go this way. And it's that one, okay. So it's the third one, uh, no, it's the second one from the left, on the left one there. It's the fourth one, on the ones on the bottom right there. Kind of seemed like I could stand on the edges of those other pipes. Which would make them similar to Mario? Except for the whole, they're forcing me to go down them. Whereas in Mario, if you have to actually press down to drop down the pipes.
It's a game which I've never actually finished, Super Mario Brothers, the original one. I got stuck on uh, Bowser's Castle in level 8. World 8. Just gonna get past it. I can't keep dying over and over and over again. I'm not very good at it. It's not a game which I grew up playing, so... Uh, my skills at jumping in it are... Uh, yeah, I've got to be able to jump, walk over those, because... Uh, I wouldn't be able to jump over them if they uh, made me drop down. But I didn't grow up playing Super Mario Brothers, so my... Uh, experience with the whole jumping mechanics in it is... Hmm. I played it a lot on my Game Boy Color. I had the uh, Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for that. But, uh... What else do I have it on? I think I had a copy of it also on my 3DS. Um... They... Nintendo gave it to me at some point as a free download. I do need to play through the whole Super Mario Brothers series. I haven't played a lot of the platformers on them. Seeing as I didn't have an NES or a SNES, played Super Mario 64 and, uh, uh, what's it called? Mario Sunshine. Uh, any other ones than those? Oh, damn it. Wasn't patient enough. I haven't played Odyssey. Uh, Mario Galaxy, I did have. Uh, but I never finished it. Either, I don't know. I lost interest or my Wii stopped working. My Wii is still broken. The uh, CD reader in it is, uh, has issues. I'd have to clean it out or something. Maybe. It kind of also depends on whether it's the, uh, whether it's also just, I don't know. It's just completely balked or not. Glad they moved back to using cartridges for the Switch. <laughs> CDs are... I don't know. Not very durable. Odyssey is so good. I've heard good things about it. I also mean to look at Breath of the Wild. I haven't seen anything of either of them, really, so... Um... I did play more of the uh, Zelda series as well. Again, Nintendo 64 mostly. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, uh, Twilight Princess for the GameCube. Uh, because when presented with the option between the GameCube version or the uh, Wii version, I was like, no, I'm going to get the GameCube version because it uses a controller instead of the Wii remote. And also because Link is supposed to be left-handed. And uh, the GameCube version is like that. Whereas I think in the Wii version, they had to, like, flip the entire game world so that he'd be right-handed or something like that. Um, other Zelda games, I have played uh, Oracle of Ages and Seasons for the Game Boy Color. Those are good fun. And I like how you can link them together to get extra content and, like, the proper ending. Hmm. What else is there? I might have played Link's Awakening, uh, at some point in the past. Um... But I haven't played the original, or Zelda 2, though I've watched multiple playthroughs of Zelda 2. Um... There's the Zelda game for the SNES, which looks really nice. 
I don't know if I've played through it or not. I don't think so. I forget what that one's called. I think it had the uh, updated version of it released not too long ago. Or like two years ago. Where it was done in 3D or something. Oh. Okay, so now what? I have collected everything. Uh, if I have to guess... Well... Maybe it's just for the extra key. I'm not really going to do that level again, am I? The Zelda on the stairs is a link to the past. That's right. Thank you. I like the sprite work in that. The uh, sparkle effects on the sword are really nice. Uh... How do you think? I think that's about all of them. I mean to play through them. Since I have the uh, Switch, I actually have access to all of those now. Oh. oh, hang on. That's not good. The internet's dropped out. Fan freaking tastic. Now, why has it gone and done that? There was storms up in uh, up in Sydney. Apparently, they had hailstones which broke some uh, roofs, glass ceilings, and all that. I did see a bit of a mention that it could come down the uh, eastern coast, possibly down to Melbourne. I'm not hearing a storm outside. Maybe the internet is just having a bit of a wobbly. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I don't really know. What am I going to do about that level up there? Um... Uh... Maybe it will sort itself out. I do have another key that might access another- that might let me access another level. Okay, so I'll save it here, and uh... I will pause the recording, and uh, we'll get back to this uh, if my internet reconnects. If it doesn't, well, uh, we're going to have to continue with Arctic Adventure next time. Uh, it will be an extremely short episode because we've only got like four more levels to go, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I like this game. It's just pleasant in its simplicity. And the visuals are nice and clear, you know, even if the colours are a bit jarring, but uh, I think they did a fine job with that. Sound effects, well, you know, it's PC speaker. They're bearable. Anyway, so I'll uh, stop the recording here. And yeah, I guess I'll be back. Maybe if my internet reconnects. Okay, well, I'm going to have to join those. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to join those two recordings together. Ah, so yeah, my internet dropped out. Uh, it has connected again. Hooray. Uh, not much happened. I took the uh, time to have a break and make myself a cuppa. Let's continue with uh, Arctic Adventure. We have three more levels to go, actually. I decided I would live with uh, doing that level. I don't know if there's a secret exit in there, which I might be missing. Uh, at this point, I don't particularly care. Okay, that just goes over to here. I hope my internet won't drop out again. If it does, I might end up having to call the stream early. Sometimes it just does that. I don't know why. Okay. So there's one down there. Ah. Let's go through here and into this cave. Oh. 
Well, what a rude welcome. Huh. Very rude. I guess he's like recounting his tale to someone else and he's like, and then I died. And they're like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. Damn it. My hat landed perfectly on the spikes. And again. Nice. Damn it. I can see this level. It's going to be... Oh, come on. I press spacebar. So at this point, I'm very glad this game doesn't have lives. I wonder if they would have planned for lives at some point in development. Hmm, okay, so... Yes. Here we go. No? Hang on. Do I have to shoot a block? No, that doesn't work. Oh! Okay, I have to go up over the uh, thing. I thought I had to maybe make a platform out of one of the uh, blocks, but nope. 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 Okay. Now. Hmm. I don't have to jump. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Actually, I do have to jump. Okay, how many more boulders are there going to be? Oh, that was the only one. Okay. There we go. Sorry, break that. Drop down. Go through here. Break that, break that. Ooh. I was like, there's some spikes over here, but I forgot where they were. I shouldn't have waited, I should have just gone for it. Ah. Oh. Uh. I've mentioned before how a few times how this is probably one of the better platformers for DOS. Uh, one of the bad platformers I remember having for DOS uh, was a platformer based on the Jetsons. And I think it might have been a port of a game uh, originally made for like the NES or something like that. Um, or yeah because I just remember the first level and never being able to get past it because of a combination of, I guess, the jumping mechanics in it were terrible. Enemies were relentless and uh, extremely difficult to dodge. I'll have to see if I can find a copy of it somewhere just to show it off because, yeah. This is why games like this stood out so much, because they weren't terrible. 
they were playable. And I was even actually able to beat this, so... At like age... Five? Six or something, I guess. Okay, go there, get that. Hey, another key. Nice. Maybe there'll be like a series of doors which we have to go through and you need to get all the keys to be able to uh, go through like four doors one after the other. I kind of wish you could see an overview of the entire map. That would make it easier to tell where I have and haven't been. Okay. Yeah, I've been down there. Uh. Okay. Where haven't I been? I mean, there's that one down there, but uh, that one's surrounded. I can't get there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh. Hello. There's a pickaxe all the way up there. Ah, I see what you have to do. Uh, there's one up there, which means we're going to have to press a button, which is all the way up there. Uh... And we need three pickaxes, so... Yep. Okay. Oh, interesting also, the uh, darts don't actually fire uh, when you're behind them, but level with them. They only fire if you're in front of them. Nope. 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 I'm not going to be having any of that. There we go. Ah. Uh, ah. Drop there. Get that. Drop down. Jump. There we go. Oh no, it actually does fire. <laughs> okay, forget what I said. It does fire when you're level with it. Uh. Oh, I can collect both of those. He says not realizing this button's going to mess everything up. Nope. It's fine. are very important. If you don't say hop, you might not make it. Well documented fact. Here we go. Hello! Welcome, welcome, Barmy. Madman's actually doing it. I said I would. You didn't believe me. Why didn't you believe me? You didn't believe me. Um. Oh, hey, there we go. And we've actually finished it. Hooray! 
After yet another cave, you sit down for a moment to rest and get warm. Suddenly, the ground begins to shake. Small ice-covered boulders begin to roll down the sides of the caves, and as you are seeking cover, the earthquake leaves as quickly as it came. You remember seeing a cave earlier that had a blocked entrance. You wonder if the earthquake has uncovered it as you head towards the cave. Ooh, okay. Hey, look, we got kind of a cutscene. <laughs> Take what you can get. Oh yeah, that, that level's opened up. Okay, so that's how you get there. You just have to finish all 19 other levels. As I said earlier, I have finished this before. Uh, way back when, when I was around four or five or around that age, uh, I would have finished it on my, on our uh, Windows 3.1 computer on DOS. At least I'm pretty confident I finished it. I remember getting the boat. Uh, yeah. Warhammer 40k Arctic Adventure. <laughs> You're playing it's like an Inquisitor or something. Hmm. Okay, so we need to get... Right, the four pickaxes. Ooh, hey! I think that's a piece of the map which we're looking for down there. All this other treasure we're getting is just, you know, it's just pocket change. When we get all four pieces of the map, then there's the real treasure. Big whoop. There we go. Also, my internet dropped out earlier, so, uh... I hope it's able to... I hope it's going to remain stable. But we're nearly finished with this, so... Yeah, we'll finish this and then, um... We'll move on to some Warhammer uh, 2 Total War. It's been quite a while since I've done any of that. Maybe I'll go through the other uh, other uh, episodes. If I can do them in like two hours, then that's more appealing. As I said, it kind of depends on how difficult they are. Damn it. But this game has unlimited lives, so... It's quite forgiving. Oop. Kangaroos eating the internet cables. I'm not sure why. There's not a storm going on at the moment. I said earlier that there is... I, I did see... Some news about there being... S damn it. Storms in uh, Sydney. With hailstones breaking uh, some glass roofs. That could be coming down this way, but... Uh, I can't hear a storm, so maybe my internet's just, uh, it's just being picky. That was BS. Hitboxes. Don't be in the same square as a damaging object. No, I've said a few times, this is one of the better platformers. There are quite a bit worse ones for DOS. Because it wasn't brutally hard and or difficult and or impossible. And the jumping mechanics are reasonable. Aside from it missing an input every now and then, but... Eh. Okay. The pause when it counts the score after grabbing your treasure gives you anxiety. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It's just like... Oh, I hope I'm going to be able to get out of the way of those spikes which are underneath me while I count this money. Have I played Dangerous Day? Um, no, I haven't. I know of it. Um, that was like the earlier platformer done by id Software, wasn't it? Except I think he's got a shotgun? Or is that a later iteration of it? We have a pistol in this one. We have limited bullets, so shooting is only when it 
completely necessary, really. You found a piece of the map! Hooray! The original title was Dangerous Dave in the case of copyright infringement. Yeah, that's right, because it was made, yeah, since they just remade the first level of Super Mario. Yeah, because it was to show off, uh, their, uh, smooth scrolling, uh, software. Unlike this one, where every screen is just a, uh, static screen, whereas Commander Keen and the likes actually had smooth scrolling on the computer, which was a new thing at the time. Uh, I don't think I've played that. I've played a few of the RPG games. Um, I played Bio Menace a bit. That's really hard. I didn't grow up playing that. I've played Monster Bash. I did play grow up, grow, grow up playing that. I played all the way through that. Uh, Cosmos Cosmic Adventure, I played all the way through. Uh, I've played all of the Commander Keens, except for Commander Keen 6, which I should get to at some point, because I do like that one. It's probably my favourite. Even if it's the jankiest out of them, it's kind of done on a unfinished level. There's a remaster of Dangerous Dave on Steam. Really? I mean, there's a remaster of, like, Crystal Caves. I played that one too. Um, that's actually very similar to this. Um, that and, what's the other one? Spy Agent or something like that? Basically exactly the same game, just with a different premise and different graphics. I think Crystal Caves and Dangerous Dave are the same game. Hmm, maybe. I don't know enough of Dangerous Dave to be able to know for sure. Um, I don't know whether they'd use the same engine. Maybe. They're kind of like this, the Crystal Cage games. They're based on, like, grids. Um, I think the levels don't scroll? I'm not too sure. They have a lot more varied obstacles in them. Uh, and enemies which shoot back. And you also have limited bullets in them as well. Have I played five? Uh, do you mean Commander Keen? Uh, yes. Unless you mean something else. Uh, I have played through all the Commander Keens. Uh, and now, uh, Commander Keen 2 and 3. Uh, you know, episode 2 and 3 of Invasion of the Vorticons. Um, because I didn't have those growing up. Because, uh, you would have to ship off for them. So, that wasn't an option, being in Australia. Ship off for a video game to America? You've got to be crazy. The shipping costs alone are going to be ridiculous in the 90s. Viking treasure map. You have the following pieces of the map collected. Hooray! Just one. End of the road. You found the first piece of the Viking treasure map. As you build a small fire to keep you warm, you reflect on the first step of your journey. I guess maybe we're using some of the Yeti corpses to, uh, <laughs> as, as fuel. Or maybe our boat. <laughs> The map is very old and fragile, so you pack it away in a protective pouch and get ready for sleep. As you crawl into your sleeping bag, you sense that you are being watched. Looking around, you decide that it must have been your imagination. The torchlight was probably just flickering off the walls of the cave. You slowly fall asleep with one eye open and dream of what awaits you in the next step of your journey. Too bad Dr. Jones didn't come along. This is going to be one great adventure. What's in store for Nevada next? Go, continue the adventures of Nevada Smith in the final three challenging volumes of Arctic Adventure. You can order the entire series, four games, 80 levels, for only $25. US, I guess. All orders must include $3 for shipping and handling. Please read the ordering info menu option for further details. Thank you for playing, and congratulations, your quest is one-fourth complete. George Broussard, Apogee Software. New high score. Hooray! The highest of scores, as it should be. I have a few other scores there when I was uh, messing around. Now, it had a message in the uh, high score system there. I don't know if that was the whole message. Will you survive the harsh Arctic land? Turns out we did. There we go. Commander Keen 5 is the most jank you think. Maybe Keen Dreams. Oh, yeah. I couldn't forget <laughs> I couldn't forget Keen Dreams. I played through Keen Dreams. I don't actually mind it too much. Um, but yeah, Keen Dreams is sort of a janky version of uh, the engine for Commander Keen 4. 
it was like an er it was early version which they before they had released commander keen 4 so uh it doesn't have some things in it which commander keen 4 does like uh ledge grabbing and i don't know i think there's a few other problems with it as well to do with jumping and the like um yeah i think keen 6 has problems where you can like glitch through terrain at certain points yeah, crap graphics. Well, yeah, they're not that great. I kind of like it just because it's different, and it's built on a solid base is probably the best aspect of it. It's more Commander Keen. It's built using a solid platforming engine, uh, minus the bugs, so it's hard to go wrong with it. But yeah, it's kind of just a curiosity with it. Keen 6 glitching through terrain is a feature, you think? Is it? Hmm. Because I remember on some of the, uh, what are they called? Blue Dome levels or something like that? I think you can, like, grab onto ledges and pull yourself through them to the outside. Um. But I think when that happened when I was, when I used to be playing it, I was just like, is this supposed to happen? <laughs> You can get to some hidden stuff that way. It's meant to be glitched through. Oh, okay. I've always wondered whether in the Commander King games whether you can get all the uh, items, all the points items. Because uh, a number of them seem to be too far out of reach. And I know about the impossible pogo jump, stick, pogo jump trick, but... Um, I don't think you can get everything. Some of them are just placed too far out of your reach. I think especially in the earlier ones. Six just runs really fun characters, a variety of enemies and levels. Yeah, I like that. You have the, uh... Are they called bloogs? And they have the big clubs and they slam the ground and stun you. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> um, what else have you got? Is that the one with the aliens with all the eyes and they have sunglasses and they take them off and they shoot, like, eye beams everywhere? And they have those guys with the huge teeth which reflect your shots back at you. You think that's five? Right. Probably good. Probably mixing things up uh, amongst them, but yeah. The enemy variety in them is pretty good. There's also some fan-made ones which I should look at. I forget which ones. There's there's, there's two in, my, in particular which I would like to look at. Uh, one is... Well, I think they're made by the same guy. Uh, they're Commander Keen... <laughs> Later on in his life, he's gotten a beer gut and he's um all scraggly looking and he goes off on one last adventure. To sort of relive the innocence of youth, but the uh, environments he go to are all sort of run down dystopian. <laughs> Terrible nightmares, so. They look fun to do and they seem to be pretty well made. Yeah, these aren't official. These are fan made uh, map packs. Copyright protection for six is that you need to name a creature. It has copyright protection, is it? Hmm. The last adventure on mobile we don't talk about. Yeah. Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't count it. <laughs> I haven't even played it. It wasn't even worth me considering it. Oh, hang on. Are we talking about two different ones here? There was a Game Boy Color uh, Commander Keen game. Um, which I think was based off of Commander Keen 6 in terms of monsters. Um, which I've never played, because I, what, I'm not going to play Commander Keen on the Game Boy. That's just silly. <laughs> Sorry for people who played it and liked it, but, uh, Commander Keen is a <laughs> easy game. <laughs> uh, and then what? Yeah, there was also something, something mobile. So, which is just, no. <laughs> Game Boy Color one is okay huh okay well that's good to hear at least I still probably won't play it it's just because it's like I don't know yeah. don't look at the E3 2019 Commander Keen trailer <laughs> I think LGR summed it up the best in his video when it came out he just like takes one look at it and goes nope <laughs> 
I don't know. I didn't mind too much, like, the design they had going for it. It's a lot more cartoony, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh. Maybe one of these companies which are doing the remakes can, like, start doing some more Commander Keens, because I feel like if they just stick to what Keen 4, 5, and 6 have been doing, then, you know, I'd be up for more of that. Yeah. Anyway, um, oh, we've got instructions. Let's have a read of this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the keyboard or joystick can be used at any time. You can recalibrate the joystick at the main menu, but most players should not have to. Because they, I don't think I'd want to play this with a joystick. You, co you collect or activate objects by touching them with your man. Stay clear of deadly objects. The main goal of each cave is to get the pickaxes headed, needed to break the ice balls at the end of each level. Of course, deadly traps and enemies will be guarding the axes. You encounter... Should it be picks? I mean, yeah, pick axes. I guess you could call them axes, but I'd call them picks. Because otherwise you get it confused with like a fire axe or something. You enter each cave from the Arctic map screen. Some caves will be easy to reach, while others will be blocked by doors or freezing ice water. Actions. Jump. Spacebar. Button 1. Shoot gun. Pause game. Oh, there's a pause button on P. Quit. Q or escape. Restore day. Restore, restore game. R. Save game. S. Toggle sounds. F1. Toggle joystick. F2. It would be nice if there was a button to just reset the level, rather than having to go into the map level and... Uh, and uh, go back into level. Just had like an instant restart. Note, you will have an infinite amount of men. You can concentrate on solving puzzles without worrying about dying. Which is very nice. There are hidden bonuses inside some of the bricks. Explore as many of them as you can. Some of the pipes lead into secret treasure rooms. Stand on top of one and press the down arrow or move the joystick down. I didn't have to press down. I went down them automatically. Is that not supposed to happen? Hmm. You can jump over an, uh, jump over any enemy. Be careful, dangerous snowballs and gun traps will pop out of the ground when you least expect it. I guess they are snowballs, not boulders. You can kill any enemy with a shot. Use bullets sparingly. You have a limited supply. supply. There we go. Okay, well, that'll be it for Arctic Adventure, Volume 1. Oop, hang on, we've got a order screen here. It's a user supported game. Maybe given to friends or distributed by shareware libraries, BBSs, or user groups. Final three volumes may not be distributed by anyone except Apogee Software. I wonder what they. I guess they came on like floppy disks. Five and a quarter or three and a quarter? 91. Hmm. Doesn't actually say here what they would have come on. Who send anyway? Shareware distributors who send a current catalog to the address below will receive a disc full of our latest games. High density floppy disk, I guess. I wonder whether it came with any other stuff or just the or just the discs. PO box, Garland, Texas. Order toll free. I wonder how much $25 is now. And $3 shipping and handling. Yeah. Anyway. That is... Uh, Arctic Adventures. For like $60. Yeah. I think that's about what, they're, what video games are generally worth now. I don't really know whether it would have been worth it. I mean, you know, compared to now. But, yeah. Four games with 20 levels each, that's, uh, that's a fair amount of gameplay. Used to live in Garland. Well, <laughs> how about that? Don't actually know where that is. I mean, as aside from being located in Texas. Let's see. Could just look up the, uh, Oh, okay, it's like a district of Dallas. Okay. That makes sense. Apparently got a landmark museum. 
And there's a thrift store down the street, down the street there, apparently. <laughs> okay, we're getting very beside the point. Uh, let's see. If this was 1993, 25 plus three dollars would be 53.15 dollars today. Okay. Yeah, that's eh, mm, well. Yeah, as I said, I would have never considered it because even at the time, shipping out to Australia would be uh would have been very expensive and wasn't an option for five year old me. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me for Arctic Adventure. I hope you join me next time.